gender-based violence refers to harmful acts directed at an individual based on their gender. It is rooted in gender inequality, the abuse of power, and harmful norms. Gender-based violence cases against women have been on the rise with rampant cases reported both locally and globally. According to UN Women, global statistics show that 30% of women totaling to 706 million have been subjected to abuse in their lives and 13% of the cases are committed by their intimate partners with an average of 66,000 women violently killed globally every year. In Kenya, 40% of women have undergone gender-based violence with counties like Busia, Garissa, Kakamega and Isiolo having the highest prevalence. I visited Monica Nasieku, a victim of GBV, now residing in Nairobi County from Isiolo, and she shares her ordeal. My name is Monica Nasieku. I am 30 years old, a mother of one, and this is my story. Mine was an arranged marriage. I was around 17 years old. This is when I just dropped out of school because of lack of enough school fees. Three months after dropping out of school, they had to perform FGM against my will and after that so they had already arranged marriage for me that is why they perform FGM for me I didn't have a choice because it was an arranged marriage so I just went with my husband so siku za kwanza alikuwa a very nice person but after nimekuwa like 4 months pregnant akaanza kuwa mlevi anakuja nyumbani late sometimes ananichapa so I decided to ask for help. I approached my mother. The word that my mom told me was, Ata mimi nilivumilia ndoa yangu, so ata wewe vumilia. Hakuna perfect person. Nikarudi kwangu, nikaendelea kuvumilia. After nime give birth, akakuwa mbaya zaidi. Ata nichapa usiku, eh, anifukuze sometimes, nirudi kwetu. But nikirudi nyumbani, bado narudisho kwa buwana. Nikaamua wacha nivumilie kwa jili ya mtoto. Ana hapo ndi ya kanza kuwa mbaya zaidi. Nikuwa na nichapa, nikuwa na report kwa polisi. Nikenda kwa polisi, wananiambia this is a family matter. So nirudi nyumbani, we, start, we settle it as a family. E, na nime reporti kwa polisi mara mingi, but wakakuwa wananiambia the same same thing. So nika decide this time, wacha niende ni reporti kwa mze wa kijiji. Akaitua akasema ata change so aka adi akanibembeleza tukarudiana pamoja tukarudi nyumbani for a while tukakuwa in peace no drama ata akacha ulevi but for like 2 years akarudi kuanza kulewa even the livu to kazi akanza akanza kutupiga usiku wanatufukuza tunalala nje Lakini juu sasa siezi rudi kwa wazazi wangu kuambia Nikakuwa na vumilia But wakati alianza kupiga mtoto zaidi Nikaona sita vumilia Na hapo ndio nili Wachana na hiyo ndoa Nika live After nime live, si kuenda mbali Nilikuwa na stay around So akakuwa ananitafuta Anajifanya mzuri for a while Anakuja anakana mtoto But Sa zile nilikata kurudi, kurudi kwake, akakuwa mbaya zaidi. Anakuja, anaongea vibaya, anatukanana kwa ploti. Na hapo ndo nilidecide ni kuja Nairobi na nianze maisha mapia. After Nasieko's story, I talked to Isiolo Gender Watch founder Grace Lolim, an organization known for helping victims of gender-based violence, so as to understand the magnitude of this vice in Isiolo County. GBV cases are very high due to patriarchal connection. Then what we started in 2004. One of the objectives is to amplify women's voices. The second one is creating safe spaces for the survivors of GBV. We also do peace building and conflict resolution, especially inclusion of women in decision making. Those are the four main objectives. The help we do, first we, we create awareness within the community on gender-based on gender -based violence. Uh, because in Isiolo, we have the culture, which is also exacerbating gender-based violence. So we have also dialogue with communities on GBV, how they can also change their narratives on 
women. We also include the religious leaders. This is now within the community. Then for the victims, we do, we counsel them, give them psychosocial support, and we also do referrals to FIDA. We also help within the police. We also lobby so that their cases are not thrown away. So many other organizations have come on board and took different parts, like now FGM is DBV. Others are now addressing FGM. Others are addressing uh, sexual violence against the girls. So we can say they can hand, but it is not as soon as possible. But if people know their rights, that is how it can hand. Mary Muthoni and Grace Kaibi, also victims of gender-based violence, narrated their stories suffering domestic violence in the hands of their intimate partners. Tulijuana wakati wake walikuwa mzuri, tukapendana, tukakuwa watu wazuri. Sasa akaanza maneno ya ulevi ulevi, tukakosana. Nikaona ameanza kumiteza, kuteza watoto. Alikuwa naleta shinde ya kukana ulevi, ulevi na kucha na tigapiga watoto, anatulusha inje. Kwa nikaona ni mateso tu. Nilika, nikio naona kama anabandirika, atapandirika, tukaka, 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 nikaona hakuna kumabandiriko. Chifu wakaniambia, ataongea na yaya, hakuna masauli mwetia. Grace Kaibi. Tulikuwa mwanzo wa maisha, tulikuwa na chita sana. Kwa na maisha ya kukarakana, kukigwa, kutuwa kuenda kwetu, kikaata watoto wangu wakakula shinda. Alafu nikaenda nikakaa kwetu kama miaka hili jibo. Nikaona watoto wangu wanakula shinda nikarimu kisena. Paka saa hii nikuwa mebandilika na kii jile. Haka wata kuyo fome, haka anza kubandilika kwa sababu ya mekana na fome. Unlike Mudoni, Grace reconciled with her husband and they now live together despite the ordeal she went through. It is evident that alcohol abuse is a contributing factor to domestic violence cases against women, especially in rural areas, among other factors such as poverty, unemployment, and financial constraints. With GBV taking many forms such as intimate partner violence, sexual violence, child marriage, and female genital mutilation, victims suffer devastating consequences with some even leading to death. According to the Ministry of Public Service and Gender, gender-based violence is an upward trajectory with the incidences coinciding with the COVID-19 period with over 5,000 cases reported. Giving her speech during the human rights celebrations which coincided with the end of 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, Professor Margaret Kobia promised that the government would intensify campaigns to end these violations by undertaking a series of commitments that would remove the barriers that allow gender-based violence to thrive. She explained why GBV should be addressed during Human Rights Day. Ladies and gentlemen, Human Rights Day comes at the right time at the end of 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, providing a crucial context that affirms the truth that says human is not truly free until women are free. Free from violence, exclusion, discrimination, and free from poverty. Further, the impact of COVID-19 pandemic has brought a setback to gender equality journey. Without gender equality, we cannot achieve sustainable development goals. I am persuaded, unless we have really gender equality, you cannot have a half of your team outside and expect to score. Therefore, it is important that we must break all barriers to gender equality. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenya's commitment to gender equality is undeterred. My ministry now responsible for children, senior citizens, women, persons living with disabilities, providing emergency support to survivors of gender-based violence through online counseling, several or on several life toll-free lines, including what the effort is going on with poly care, I think which we are all aware, and also supporting medical and legal services and the safe spaces. The ministry has also established about 
eight gender-based shelters, and also gender-based violence recovery centers in all the five hospitals across the country. The provision of practice of genital female nutrition through the Female Genital Nutrition Act 2011 has gone a long way in stemming the practice in Kenya. Now, there has been a single long long-term decline in the rates of FGM since the 1980s, and now we stand at 21% uh, nationally. To advance the economic rights of women, the government continues to upscale efforts to place affirmative financial resources in the hands of women, because we are very clear who is the enemy. I think the enemy of human rights is poverty. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to emphasize the commitment of the government of Kenya to safeguard all human rights and they pay special attention to the protection of women and girls so that they may fully enjoy their fundamental rights and rise to their full potential. Her sentiments were echoed by Nairobi Women Representative Esther Pasaris during the 16 days of activism online webinar organized by AMWIC in partnership with UAF, a campaign aimed at advocating against gender-based violence. She addressed GBV as a world issue and highlighted government projects and initiatives being put in place to support the victims. Many gender-based violence victims have not been able to get justice due to police corruption, lack of police capacity to conduct investigations, and interference in and mishandling of cases severely reducing survivors' ability to seek justice. In many reported cases, perpetrators buy their way to freedom where they stalk the victims, threaten, and even cause bodily harm. Police need to be integrated in response to GBV as there is need to work towards the full implementation of the law where justice is served, perpetrators are punished because prevention of GBV is key to stopping these violations. The media has a very critical role to play in promoting the Generation Equality Forum agenda and that gender equality can only be promoted by highlighting the unconscious gender bias. The media should always mention both legal and social consequences to perpetrators of GBV. There is need for immediate care, mentorship, psychosocial support, food and shelter. Linking survivors to information resource centers, vocational trainings to acquire skills, mentorship programs and allocating resources will help them empower themselves and have sources of income to progress their lives. Public education and community sensitization are some of the effective solutions highlighted by human rights organizations towards ending GBV. They have also urged the government to declare sexual and gender-based violence a national disaster, as it is not only barbaric but also a violation of human rights, degrading women and leaving them with no space in the society. These rights need to be strongly condemned because women's rights are human rights. My name is Elsie. Karen